In today's video, I really wanted to show you guys a workflow that I recently came up with this past year. And this is something that I do on pretty much every single environment piece that I work on. It usually starts with me building all my focal points using 3D code. And then once I'm done with that, I take all of those focal points, those main pieces of my environment into the Blender. And then that's where I build my whole scene. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do for the most part is always have references. For this piece up here, I wanted you to create more like a uh, an interior lab of some sort. The main inspiration came from movies like Elysium and Oblivion and The Martian. And the kind the lighting that I was kind of going for was more like a very uh, a very whitewashed lighting, if that makes sense. You know, you see those hospital facilities and those mental wards where everything is just like completely white. Like you got those white bright lights. You got all the white interior walls, ceiling, carpet, not carpet, <laughs> you know, the walls and the floors and the ceiling, everything is like super polished. That's the kind of form language I was going for. And the idea that I had was, okay, what if this place is some, is it, what if this is a place where people get brainwashed, you know? So you got this main structure and then around that structure are these little beds that kind of look like MRI machines. That was the main inspiration for that. And yeah, that's where people go to get their memories erased. That was the idea, as simple as that. So after you spend a few hours or maybe a day getting of references, you want to start thumbnailing. So what you can do, there are two approaches you can take. You can either sketch everything out, maybe do like maybe six different thumbnails, sketch them out in Photoshop or on a piece of paper, traditionally, whatever, however you feel comfortable. Or you can just straight up go to 3D and you do a simple 3D block out. In my case, I did a 3D block out in Blender because I just feel like it's a lot faster and I, and I just wanted to explore and see how the whole 3D experience was because I've never really done like a block out like that before. So when you start doing block out, you want to make sure you keep everything super simple. You know, we're not really thinking about any details. We're mostly focusing on composition and and, you know, like our elements, like where you want to place everything, you know. So if you look at look at me up here, I pretty much use cylinders and, you know, cubes and you know, little things like that. I wasn't going super detailed into it, but I was actively making sure I'm placing them in areas where I would want my focal point. Because once you're done with your block out, what you end up doing is that you just replace those simple models with the more high, the more highly detailed polished models on top of it. During this stage, I would also recommend you start thinking about lighting. Um, in my case, I used mesh lights. The way you can do that in Blender, you, you just use an emission node some people like to use spotlights and you know point lights you can even use a sun every now and then inside of like an interior sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but i personally like using mesh lights because then you can literally just scatter them all over your scene and they just act like you know fluorescent bulbs or tube lights so that's really good once I got my 3D block out, you know, all ready and good to go, I decided to go into 3D code and that's where I started modeling out my, and that's where I started modeling out my main structure. So this main structure, I was thinking about more like the main power source for running the, running the, all these machines up here. And over here, I was mostly using the 2D paint tool and the cut tool. And what I was pretty much doing, I, w I was just drawing in 3D. I was drawing like little structures, little details here and there. But even before I started doing those intricate details, I started with a simple cylinder, cylindrical looking shape. It's always nice you start off simple. You always want to start off with a simple block out. Don't ever go into it with a lot of details because what happens is that if you get lost into the details in the very beginning, um, you start focusing less on the bigger picture and more on the little things and everything starts to look very noisy as well. So I would highly recommend you start off simple and then you gradually add detail to it. Even when I was working on this, um, there was a point where I just thought that man, this looks way too noisy. So I gotta like put some panels or something on top of all these little wires and, li and these little details up here so that it doesn't get you know too, a little too crazy. And you'll also see me constantly duplicate my layers and just reuse a lot of the pieces that I made. You know, work smart, not hard. You don't really have to constantly make everything from scratch. If you feel like there's something you can recycle, I would definitely 100% do it. So I continued working on just modeling out my main structure first. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, I recycle a lot of my pieces up here. And, and you know, the reason why I like 3D code, right? You can 
if you look closely, I am literally drawing in 3D. I'm drawing these structures in 3D and then I'm just smoothing them out. And I'm also going back and forth with it. You know, I'm, you know, I would draw something out and then I would not like it, hit control Z, do it again. I wouldn't like it again, hit control Z again. And it's just a constant back and forth happening. And this happens a lot and you just need to get comfortable with that process. Um, that's where I think it's very important. Like don't get too attached to your initial designs. Don't get too attached to your first few marks. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't work. And many times they will not work. And the only way for you to figure out if it's working or not working is by constantly iterating on top of what you've been already making. I did the same thing and then I used the snake tool a little bit more for adding a little bit of wiring, a little bit of piping up there. And then I was constantly going back and forth. I added some more paneling to cover up a little bit off those little wires inside of it because I felt like it was getting a little too noisy. And every single time you'll see me use a cylinder for like a basic cylinder and then I would add details to that cylinder and add some more panels and things like that to it. So this was mainly my main structure. In this, uh, in this, for this piece though, I did not, I did not texture inside of 3D code because I wanted to use some PBR material inside of Blender, but you can totally texture it in 3D code as well. And I honestly, looking back, it would have been nice if I did texture in 3D code because then I wouldn't have wasted a lot of my time looking for the perfect texture inside of Blender. Because when I was working on this scene, you'll see me in the Blender part I was constantly fighting um, with the software trying to figure out what's the best material that I, I should be using for this. And I would have eliminated hours of work if I would have just textured it inside of 3D code. But you know what? It is what it is. Anyways, once I got that main structure done, it was time to do the little med beds. The reason why I call it a med bed is because in the movie Elysium, it is called a med bed. A med bed was like this little bed thingy where like if you laid down on it, it would just heal any sickness that you had. It would just make you a brand new person. So that was the main idea. That was the main inspiration that I had for this bed as well. But the function of this bed was completely opposite from what a med bed would do, which was to heal people. Um, this was the bed that I made was more for like brainwashing people, which is why I heavily influenced MRI machines. So because I wanted to look like, OK, maybe there's this little helmet connected to the central part of this machine that's connected to the human's face, not the face, their head. And it sucks out all the energy from them and they just they don't die. But I feel like they just don't know who they are at that point. And the idea was that I would have people willingly go and do this. You know, what if like you, you're someone who had bad memories in the past and you just want to start off fresh like a brand new person. So for that. But then I can also see it could also be a case where people could just use it to just brainwash people. Let's say the government released this machine and they're like, oh my God, we did some weird ass bad shit and we don't want people to remember all the weird, all the weird shit that we did. So we're going to brainwash them. So I don't know. I don't know. This was, was, was a little thinking that I had going on when I was working on this. And it's very, it's really nice. You think about these little story elements because then you can implement that to your design. And whenever you make something, it's always helpful to have have a little story behind whatever you're making because it just shows and you'll just be more passionate about what you're making and uh, it'll help you out as well. And once again, I'm using the same techniques that I used in the previous one. Um, start big, add a little bit of details, a little bit of cut lines here and there. Then you start working on the little stuff. For this bed itself, the little stuff that I'm talking about are the little straps that I made. To kind of hold people down and notice how like i always have a human scale where, whenever i make something you want to make sure you make everything to scale like no matter what you're doing even if it's a simple block out you always want to have a human being like a real scale human so that you make everything to scale because what happens sometimes if you don't pay attention to your skill from the very beginning you'll have a lot of problems moving forward and a lot of the things that i do you know everything comes from experimentation like i wouldn't call myself a pro when it comes to sculpting or you know doing poly modeling in 3d like i know the basics of how to use the software and the basic functions but many times i'm just winging it not gonna lie i'm just experimenting seeing what's working and what's not working and i highly recommend you guys do it as well always have a very open mind when you're making a 3d scene you know and it's a journey you know it's a process you just gotta you just gotta be in love with the process because that's what you need that's what art is you know you can't just be good at this thing overnight you have to spend hours maybe days weeks months years to find out what's working for you and what's not and you know whatever workflow that i'm showing you guys i don't think it's gonna 
you might not work for you, you know, because maybe you have a different preference. But how do you find out the things you're comfortable with doing? You only find out when you experiment a lot. So I highly recommend you guys look up my channel, look up other channels as well. See what other people are doing as well. Maybe they're doing stuff better than me. And if they are, let me know so that I can see what, what they're doing. And then maybe I can just implement whatever they're doing on my workflow instead. Definitely keep, your, keep an open mind, experiment a lot, and explore a lot of channels. Once I was done uh, with all my modeling inside of 3D Code, it was time to import them inside of Blender. And that's where I started replacing my cute little blockouts by these nice heavy detailed polygons. And initially I started off with the beds first. So I put them up there. Sometimes the scaling can be a little weird. So you have to fix those as well. And I also decimate, decimate my model a little bit more. For those of you who don't know what decimation is. So when you're working inside of 3D code, your models are very high poly, you know, they're very dense. And to reduce your render time, you want to make sure that they're not super dense. So decimation is the process where you can reduce your poly count, but you have to be careful with it because if you reduce it way too much, it can completely break all the 3D models. So you have to find that sweet spot where your polys are a little low, but then you're not losing any of the detail as well. Some people, what they do, they uh, use normal maps, they bake everything inside of it. I use that too sometimes. Uh, I only do it when I texture inside of 3D code because if I don't texture it inside of 3D code, I'm not really sure how to do it outside of it. So something that I'll learn hopefully someday. Once I was done importing the beds, it was time to import the main structure. And then I played around with it a little bit. And then um, I also, I mentioned earlier about some mesh light. So I had this nice hexagonal round circle-ish thing happening. And that's what, that was my main light source. And here I was uh, doing the same thing. I was you can also alter your models a little bit more as well and I was constantly turning my light on and seeing what it looks like with uh, the lights but this is also where I started adding some textures as well right now I was for the beds I wanted them to look pretty simple because I don't because my main structure had so much detail so I wanted to make sure there are some areas of rest so the beds in themselves had just simple base color with a little bit of metallic on it and this is the part where you know i'm just constantly just experimenting i'm trying to see you know what's working for me what's not working for me i actually had um a tough time with the floor so i wanted to add these little cut lines to the floor and the ceiling so initially it worked really well but then when i wanted to add some more cut lines it kind of messed up a little bit so uh, i would definitely when you're working on these big scenes sometimes it's always good to keep track of your polygons and your edges and not go too crazy like how i did because then sometimes it can like break your meshes and then you'll have trouble fixing it in the future. So now it was time to work on the walls. So for the walls, what I did is that I just had one simple, I wanted to make a modular piece, right? So I had one piece of wall, piece of wall, that sounds weird, but you get the idea. And I just, I had a very simple block out where I extruded parts, the top and the bottom part of it. And then I used the knife tool to just kind of like cut into my polygons. And I also used a mirror modifier on it so that whenever, whatever I draw or model on the left side, it mirrors to the other side as well. And here I was doing the exact same thing. I was just using the, the knife tool. I was making different cut lines and I was making these little tiny extrusions because uh, that's what sci-fi is, right? If you look closely to sci-fi, it's mostly very simple looking structures with cut lines. And you want to make sure you're not going too crazy with your cut lines either because you don't want to make sure because once again, you always want to make sure your pieces are not noisy because it's very easy to get a lot of detail in, right? And sometimes we get super excited when we can add so much detail within a blink of an eye. So you have to always uh, zoom out, pay attention, see if you're doing everything right. The other tool that I also recently discovered actually in Blender is this uh, add-on that I found out. I think it's called it's called a random flow add-on and I use that to put these little pipes up here and you can also use this add-on to do some paneling as well. I didn't use it as heavily in this piece because I wanted everything to look really nice and polished but if you're doing like more of a uh, industrial or a cyberpunk looking scene <clears throat> then that add-on is really good for that. But in my case, I only used it for the pipes right up here. And then after using it, you still have to tweak it a little bit where you might want to like uh, extrude the edges or um, 
make it look a little bit more thick but once again yeah uh, i did the same thing on the corners i added some more uh pillars and extruded them in and then i also added some grills on the top and the left as well it's a really cool add-on not an add-on sorry it's a modifier if you use a cube and you use the wireframe modifier it'll it'll literally make it into a wire like like a mesh like a wired mesh which is really cool so once i had this one wall done i ended up using an array on it and i think i ended up using one two three four five six seven eight different walls yes so i made an array of eight pieces and then from there i used a simple mod simple deform modifier where i had it in a circular structure and then once again once again i replaced it with my uh simple looking block out of my wall and deleted the rest this was awesome at this point i had most of my elements in my scene and it was time to add some more lighting so i did have uh lights on the top of the ceiling and i had some on the floor as well and then i added some little lights on the walls um and once again these were just mesh lights so i selected all the faces where i wanted the lights on i duplicated those faces and extruded them so that they were like a, a chunky piece and then yeah i had these little extra lights on the corner as well which is awesome i love how everything was coming along at this point so now i felt like experimenting with the bed itself a little bit so because my pieces were in separate uh meshes i was able to scale them up move them around a little bit and i got some really cool looking interesting shapes as well and then i also added a cube and this is where i used the random flow add-on one more time to get some paneling on top of that cube so that it's not just a plain looking cube you know plain boring looking cube but um yeah i moved around those little pieces and it started looking a little bit more unique and i loved you know it's, that's why you want to just constantly just play around you know don't just settle on one idea honestly if you want to just experiment just do it you can just hit command z control z whatever and just go back to your original state it's okay no one's gonna die it's okay everything's gonna be fine but experiment please please just experiment if it doesn't work out you can always go back and that's what I did. And that's the mindset I had when I was working on this piece. You know, I was constantly trying out different t different things, different iterations, different techniques. And every single time I tried something new, it worked out better than what it looked like before. That makes sense. But things were looking pretty good at this point. I was feeling pretty good myself about myself as well. And then I moved on to the main structure of the piece. And this was the area where I wanted to... Initially, I was thinking that this could be like a place where I can put some monitors and people can just be like standing around it and just monitoring stuff. But then later, I thought it's not going to make any sense design-wise because you have this really big functional um, structure up here. That's, you know, the main power source is going to be pretty dangerous for people if they're just standing right so super close to it. So I thought this could just be like a little, uh, little barricade instead that'll just have signs on it saying like, you know, those decals, those caution decals and whatnot. And so I added, I added a little bit of thickness and I used the random flow add on one more time to add some paneling on it as well. I was pretty happy with how everything was turning out. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to focus next was on the materials a little bit. And um, I just used a basic metal material, I, I guess. I was using Quixel Mega Scans for the most of my materials over here as well. The next thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to see if there is a way that I can make the connections from the bed to the main structure look a little bit more interesting. So my first thought, okay, let me just model something out. But then I thought to myself that, hey, what if I copy pasted some of my... Uh, elements from the main structure and see how that looks and i did it and it looked amazing and i loved it and once again you know experiment you know constantly duplicate stuff see what's working what's not working if you can if you can reuse your pieces that's that's the dream right there so try to model stuff that you can definitely reuse and you don't have to constantly model everything out from scratch it's so helpful I did the same thing up here like i i had this one little slender looking stuff which was a part of my block out actually it wasn't even supposed to be a part of my main focal point but then it worked out so well i ended up duplicating it mirroring it and just added these little connections that are just connected to the beds itself and everything was coming together so good at this point so a lot of times that's what i do like i'll start building these highly detailed polished meshes and then at one point when you have so much detail going on in one piece you can then reuse all those pieces the next thing that I decided to do is that I downloaded some characters from Mixamo. If you don't know what Mixamo is, it's this really cool, uh, really cool website where you can find 3D models of different, you know, characters or creatures or whatnot. They got a massive library. They've 
come a long way honestly and they have these animations built in on them as well and if you delete all your keyframes you can just get a specific pose so i wanted to have some maybe some normal looking human beings on the beds and then maybe some nurse looking guy around the bed you know just kind of like pushing buttons or stuff on the computers and whatnot and then i thought maybe i could have this lady ceo person just like on the phone talking <laughs> Next thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to model out the main computer itself. And here is where I referenced the design from the movie Oblivion quite heavily. I wanted to keep everything super simple, nothing too crazy. And so I feel like this is where I think I would use Blender, right? So like if I'm doing any basic, you know, simple modeling, I would not do that in 3D code simply because it's just, it's just a lot easier to just do it in Blender, just simple poly modeling. I feel like I can save some time that way and I can just keep everything super simple because when I'm in 3D code, I just want to add detail, detail. That's just my brain. That's just how it works. And so if I want to constrain myself, I'll just stay inside of Blender and tell myself, okay, let's just make something more simple looking. And so I just wanted a simple looking computer with some maybe graphs or some images or whatnot. And then once again, added some more extrusions, some more cut lines. I just kept building it and you know, start from big to small for the most part. Okay, so with everything done, this is what I had so far. This was my final 3D render that came outside of Blender. So I did have a lot of my detail up here. Now the next thing that I want to do is that what are the things that I can do to elevate this piece a little bit more? So right now when I look at it, I feel like I have the main structure up here but then everything around is super noisy and the lighting is still not matching the reference that I had and so I have to push that a little bit more as well. So this time now I'm going to go to Photoshop and start painting on top of it. And this was the second shot as well that I rendered out. So the first thing that I had, I had a bloom pass at first. So this bloom up here, it is set to screen right now if I put it on normal. It's straight up just an image. So it's just an image with some glow into it. So what I did was that I had it on screen and I reduced the opacity to around 60%. And so it added that little glow around everything. And then I had another pass. It was a specular pass that kind of added a little bit of specularity on my entire scene up here. And then I used a level slider to kind of push my lighting a little bit more. And then from there, I color corrected my uh, character up here. This little character, I feel like she was way too shiny. And then from there, I just kept building it up. I had an ambient occlusion pass. Occlusion passes are really good for adding these detail to these little crevices up here. And I would recommend using this on a multiplier to play around with your opacity, see what's working and what's not working. And then the next thing that I wanted to do is that I had a mist pass as well. Usually a mist pass is really good for making selections. And apart from the mist pass, there's also a clown pass. And clown pass is like for even more fine finer selections where you're just you just assigned uh, a random color and you can just use the the magic wand and just color pick and then you know hide your layer and then make adjustments and from there you just start building it you know you slowly and steadily start building it i ended up you know simplifying most of my background for the most part that was the main goal that i was going for and also started painting a little bit as well where I had these weird noise noisy stuff happening I would just make a new layer grab my basic brush It doesn't have to be a fancy brush dude Just anything basic is good and just paint on top of it and once again to sci-fi things up It's always nice to add some cut lines and add some interesting shapes and you know Break your shapes up a little bit more as well and here, you know You don't need any crazy brushes like I said earlier Just use a hard round brush and just try to break your away your, from your shapes a little bit maybe add some more details to it or maybe cover up some details as well added some wires as well and you know it takes so little right you just need uh what i was pretty much doing i was using a hard round brush and i would make a line and then i would use my eraser and just erase away a little bit of it and that way i had these little subtle details these little subtle a little subtle um, edge lines and crevices and whatnot and and i was constantly going back and forth with my levels as well trying to figure out that okay what's the best way for me to push it it was really tricky honestly because you know i didn't want it to be get to a point where it's like super crazy white and just it just breaks away everything so it was quite a challenge figuring that part out and this is the part where you can just really just like zone out and the, the main goal up here is just to make uh, break away from the 3dness now usually if, if I'm working on an environment where it's more like a post-apocalyptic scene or something old or rusty you can easily just throw in a grunge texture or whatnot and just call it a day but in this case I wanted everything to be a little bit more 
you know, fine-tuned and polished interior designs. So it was really hard to break away from the 3D-ness, but I still ended up using some textures here and there just to kind of show the little painterly um, effect as well. Like on the floor, I added some grunge-ness because like, you know, no matter how clean something might be, there'll still be a little bit of scratches on the panels or anything. And at this point you can you can literally just photo bash stuff in and either do that or you can just grab some custom brushes maybe at this point and paint something in as well and so just do whatever you feel like doing at this point and once again just make as many layers as possible because that way you um have a backup plan let's say if you try something out and if it's not working then you can always just delete that layer itself and definitely use a lot of layer masks use for your images whatever images you're using i would 100 percent use a layer mask because once again you know you're you're playing it safe that way and here i was just um you know at this point i wasn't i got a little bit too carried away with all, with all the textures that i forgot that hey everything is looking super noisy in the background and so what I ended up doing is that I had to pull back a little bit, like you'll see me do that in a minute. Right now I'm still just brainlessly putting textures all over the place. <laughs> and oh my god, it's, it's so easy to get carried away, man. When you're working in digital arts, like it's so easy to get carried away and you have to just um, push back a little bit. And at this point, it's also very helpful to get feedback from your peers, you know, from your friends or, you know, if you're in a class, you know, get some feedback from your teachers as well, because then they'll tell you hey what's working and what's not working and honestly when i was at this phase of my painting i thought that it looked amazing it looked great but then i got some feedback on it and i realized that oh my god everything is so noisy like because i had this big noisy structure in the middle and everything on behind it was still fairly detailed and i wanted to make sure that it's not super detailed which i'll get to in a minute and it's always nice to add some decals as well thought i put some numbers on these beds since i had four beds around the main structure you know you could have uh, one two three four numbers but then this is the part where i ended up going back to the background walls and i started um taking away some of the detailing because i felt like it was it was getting a little too distracting and just like magic everything starts to read a lot better and here's also where it's always nice to constantly check your graphic read as well which i did not do up here which would have been really helpful if i would have had everything separated out in black and white but you see how like i you know painted gray on those windows and suddenly everything started looking so much better so you know in this case it's one of those things less is more and then i painted away color correct a little bit more and then this time it was time to put some decals my favorite part so with decals you know just find some google images i thought maybe i could just use some caution tapes or some you know that exclamation mark saying that oh stay away from this it's dangerous and whatnot and um, you can then paint away parts of it you can also use different layer styles where you can blend your images to the background a little bit so it's a it's a cool way to you know get that little um have it it's a cool way to show that okay this this image is part of the uh, part of the whole scene because sometimes the colors can be a little too strong and definitely i would color correct it as well you know see what works for you you know you, there's not just one technique you'd be using for some for color correcting you'll have to either use the hue saturation slider or the color balance slider or you'll have to just um Sometimes you can get lucky by just using different layer modes. You know, if you just put it on overlay or something, it works really well. And uh, yeah, it was just rinse and repeat at this point and there wasn't anything crazy going on. I was pretty much just done. It was just fine tuning at this point where I was just putting in decals all over the place. And so after a lot of hard work, this was the final image. And oh my God, this came a long way. And I was so happy with how this turned out. And like I said, you know, when you're working on a complex image like this, you constantly have to go back and forth and you constantly have to make decisions that'll help you make a whole scene, you know, because then there are times where like I'll model stuff out in 3D where it's super, super detailed and whatnot. But then I have to push back in my final image because sometimes it, does, it just doesn't work. And so you always have to keep an open mind. You know, if you make something in 3D and it's super detailed and you have to take away all that detail away, in your final image in photoshop whatever just don't feel sad about it just just take it away and look at the image as a whole so this was the first image that i had and using the exact same workflow techniques this was the second image that i had up here and yeah that's about it for the most part honestly and sometimes it's also helpful to make a sheet of renders you know just to kind of showcase the different renders you had that came outside of blender and then I'll also do a callout sheet or I'll usually do a front view, side view, back view, top view, 
of my main focal point min structure so that it's easier for the 3D modelers to model this out in 3D. All right guys, that should be all for today. Thank you so much for sticking around and hearing me ramble throughout the entire 30 minutes of this video and I appreciate your patience and hopefully you know you probably got an idea on how you can use these different softwares to make um, something really cool you know um, if you if you like this workflow let me know in the comments if there's any questions or anything you guys have let me know in the comments as well in reality I think it took me around 15 to 16 hours on this piece if I'm excluding all the render times because my render times were pretty crazy not gonna lie um, which is funny because you know when I rendered the very first time it took forever but then I rendered it like three four times in blender and it was so fast it would take it took like maybe like 10 minutes so I don't know what's up with that in this video we focus more on the hard surface aspect of this design in the next one I'm thinking of being more organic looking just to kind of give you uh, an idea on how similar the workflow would be even though it's completely different right the workflow is still very similar so you can pretty much use this for uh, anything that you want to make so yeah be on the lookout for that and i appreciate you being here i'll see you guys in the next one